Hello and welcome to the video of top 7 pivot table tricks. You should have basic knowledge of pivot table to enjoy these tricks. Let's see what tricks we are talking about. First, we'll talk about grouping dates and numbers. Second, we'll talk about slicer and related settings. Third, a pivot table chart shortcut. Next, how to disable auto fit column width. How to disable the get pivot data formula. Next, how to perform 2D table data consolidation with pivot table. And last, how to create hundreds of pivot table reports in less than one minute. So let's begin. First, grouping dates. If you have dates in a pivot table field, and if you right click on the date, you can group them and the options available to you would be these. Let's see them in action. Before me lies the data of 400 plus people, their salary, division, reading, age, and the date of joining. Of course, it's hypothetical data, but we'll see how these tricks get applied to this data. So I choose the information, I go to insert, I go to pivot table, and I press OK, making sure that this option is ticked off. OK. Now, based on the basics of pivot table knowledge, I'll go to pivot table options, go to display, and activate the classic pivot table layout settings. Now, if I put DOJ in the row fields and I right click on any one of the given dates, I get this option called group. If I opt for group, I get these money options based on the dates. So what happens if I choose years and months? You'll see in few seconds. Yes, all the dates have been reclassified into years and within years, the multiple months. What if I interchange years and months? What you see is January of multiple years, February of multiple years, and so on. What if I put years in the column? Whoa, isn't that great? What if you can interchange the two between rows and columns? That's also great. In fact, this can help you determine how many people join in which year in which month. All I have to do is put name in the main field, which calculates the count of name. So my friends, that was about grouping dates. Next, grouping numbers. Same option, but this time on numbers, which could be salary or rating or age. Let's see it in action. Taking the same data of 400 plus people, if I put salary in the row fields, and if I put age in the column field, let's see what happens if I try to group them. I right click on the salary, I go to group, okay. And I put the starting salary as $1. Clearly, the interval is 1 lakh. Let me press OK. Wow. It puts the salary into multiple brackets. What happens if I do the same in age? Let me see. I right click, I go to group, and let the interval be 10. Great. Now if I put name in the main value fields area, I get to see 417 employees spread over multiple age groups and multiple salary brackets. So that's what you get if you try to group numbers. Next, slicer and related settings. In the same example, if I right click on division and I click on add as slicer, the result that I get is these slicers control the output on the left, right? If I choose RAD, that means only 148 people work in the division RAD. What if you want to change the colors of the slicer? You can go to option, click on any one of the color and thus make it look more appealing. What if you want to accommodate all these divisions in lesser area of the slicer? Well, in that case, you can go to options of the slicer tools and increase the column. Noticed? This way, you can accommodate more division name in lesser area. If you want to unfilter, you can simply click on this icon and gone. Same way, if you want to go to rating, you can again right click and go to slicer. If you feel there are many fields that you would want to add slicers for, you can directly go to analyze and then click on insert slicer and then choose rating and division, both. For now, I'll just choose rating, okay? and I'll adjust this. And once adjusted, I may want to increase the number of columns. So I go to options. And then just like the previous case, I add the column. 
Wow. Now, if you choose HFD and then choose rating 2, this means only people from HFD who carry rating 2 are being shown in this pivot table on the left. So that was a quick example of how to add slicer and what does it do. Next, pivot table chart shortcut. At this point, if you press F11, it quickly populates a chart and this chart you can modify by right clicking on the bars and going to chain series chart type. This would allow you to choose many options and then chain the charts type. Keep in mind, it generates a new sheet in which the chart is populated. So that was about using a shortcut key F11 to create an automatic chart out of a pivot table. Next, disable auto fit column widths. Quite often, you would want to disable the options of auto fit column widths. Why? Because they distort the pivot table layout. Let's see it in action. So in this case, if I go to pivot table, I go to pivot table options, and then I make sure this auto fit option is disabled. Okay. Now, even if I choose to change the value field settings, notice it doesn't change the column width. Let me add more columns randomly. Right. So it keeps it consistent as it was in the initial phases. Next, how to disable the get pivot data for formula writing. Friends, you would have noticed that if you try to write a formula using the values inside the pivot table, it generates something called get pivot data. And at times, this is irritating. So how do you disable this? Well, you should get inside the pivot table, go to analyze, and then look for this options on the left. Click on the drop down and you'll see something called generate get pivot data. Click on this and it gets disabled. Next time, when you write the formula, it simply picks up the value as you would otherwise expect. Great, problem solved. Next, 2D table data consolidation, the shortcut key of which is all DP. Let me put this into action. Imagine you have one sheet which talks about the sales made by the team and the sales belongs to water purifier basic model. Next, there's a water purifier reverse osmosis model, maybe sold by the same set of agents, maybe some new additions. The sequence is not the same as the previous one. Correct. There's one more model, which is called water purifier latest model. Now, I wish to consolidate all this data despite the fact that the sequence of names are not same. So I go to new sheet, I pick up a cell and I press all DP, right? This is using a shortcut key from the older versions of pivot table. And from here, I choose multiple consolidation ranges. Next, I click on next, and then it allows me to choose all the three tables range. So I go to the basic model. I choose this table range. I add this. Next, I go to the RO model. I choose the table correctly, and I add that as well. Finally, I go to the latest model and I choose that table set and I add it. Once done, I click on finish and there you go. What you see is all those agents name along with their sales in multiple months. If I want, I can extend the column width. And if I want further, I can right click on the page one, which indicates the model type and click on slicer. This way I can go to item one, item two, item three. Now, if I want to disable the automated column width settings, I can go to right click, go to pivot table options and make sure this auto fit column width is disabled. Something that we saw few seconds back. Once I readjust the column, it is not going to change. Look at the output. Whoa, that's great. If you want, you can add a hint of heat map. I can choose this entire data set, excluding the grand total, go to home tab and apply conditional formatting color scales. That's the basic heat map. There you go. So you can see who sold how much worth of items. So that was 2D table data consolidation using alt DP. Next, creating hundreds of pivot table reports in less than one minute. Now this is one of my favorite favorite tricks. This trick belongs to an option which says show report filter pages. And to use that, you must have these two areas activated. Let's see it in action. Now, a few minutes back, we had created something like this using date grouping. What if I want the same report for all my divisions? Well, to do so, I put the division in the report filter area. This step is a must. 
And if you do so, you'll see all here. Correspondingly, you'll also see division at the bottom right corner. Now, go to Analyze, go to Options drop down and click on Show Report Filter Pages. This will only be activated if you have something under the Filters area. If you click on that option, press OK. In one second flat, you'll see these sheets being created in front of our eyes. Even if you had 600 different divisions, it would not take more than a minute. Now that's what I call a ninja trick. So in the last few minutes, we saw some wonderful pivot table tricks, how to group dates and numbers, slicer and related settings, how to change the colors and add more columns inside the slicers. Next, F11 being the pivot chart shortcut. Next, how do you disable the auto fit column widths? Next, how do you disable the irritating get pivot data formula? Next, how to use Alt DP shortcut key to activate 2D table data consolidation using pivot table. Perhaps you may add a flavor of heat map. And finally, how to create hundreds of pivot table reports in less than one minute. So practice these simple pivot table tricks and see your pivot table creation ability go to the next level.